Imagine, if you will, an isolated stretch of land in Brown County, miles from any bustling city life. It was here on April 24, 2015, that an unspeakable horror was discovered. The lifeless body of Hannah Wilson, a 22-year-old Indiana University senior. Shockwaves rippled through the heartland as the news broke. Hannah, known for her radiant smile and zest for life, was found bludgeoned to death in a place far from her Bloomington home. The gruesome discovery sent chills down the spine of every person who heard the story, painting a stark contrast against the vibrant spring season. The case quickly attracted national attention. The chilling circumstances of Hannah's death and the mystery surrounding it drew comparisons to another unsolved disappearance of a fellow Indiana University student, Lauren Spearer. The media swarmed, the public gasped, and a community mourned the loss of a bright young woman whose life was brutally cut short. This grim discovery was only the beginning of a haunting narrative that would unfold over the coming years. Enter Daniel Messel, a 50-year-old Bloomington man, found under circumstances that painted a chilling picture. This was no ordinary man caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. No, Messel was discovered with incriminating evidence that would make even the most seasoned detective's blood run cold. Wilson's cell phone, a lifeline to her world, was found in Messel's possession. But the evidence didn't stop there. His clothes and car, ordinary objects of everyday life, became silent witnesses to a horrendous crime. They were stained with blood, an undeniable testament of a violent encounter. And so, the gears of justice began to turn. Messel was arrested, and his trial commenced. As the courtroom filled with anticipation, Messel maintained his innocence. He stood before the court, not as a confessing criminal, but as a man proclaiming his innocence. His defense team worked tirelessly to sow seeds of doubt, questioning the investigation and hinting at the possibility of other suspects. Yet, the question loomed over the courtroom, casting a shadow on the proceedings. But was Messel truly the mastermind behind this heinous act, or was he merely a scapegoat? The answer, it seemed, was as elusive as the motive behind the murder. The courtroom doors swing open, the trial of the decade is about to commence. Daniel Messel, a man in his 50s from Bloomington, stands accused of a crime that has shaken the nation, the brutal murder of Indiana University senior, Hannah Wilson. As the trial unfolds, a mosaic of testimonies begins to paint a chilling picture. Friends of Hannah Wilson take the stand, their faces etched with sorrow as they recount the last moments they shared with their friend. Their words weave a tale of a night that began with innocent celebration, but ended in unspeakable horror. Next to testify are friends of Daniel Messel, their words casting a shadow over the man they once thought they knew. Their accounts, however, offer no clear motive, no reason why their friend could commit such an atrocious act. Then comes the cold, clinical language of science. A pathologist steps up, laying bare the gruesome details of Hannah's demise. Each word seems to hang in the air, a stark reminder of the violence that ended a young life so abruptly. Following the pathologist, a blood spatter expert takes the stand, his testimony further corroborating the grim narrative. Yet, as the prosecution presents its case, the defense is not idle. They begin to raise questions, stirring doubts about the investigation. Could there be other suspects? Are there stones left unturned? As they probe and challenge, they strive to present an alternative narrative, one that might cast their client in a different light. But as the day draws to a close, one question looms large over the courtroom, a question that has haunted this case from the outset. Why? Why did this happen? What drove the perpetrator to commit such a heinous crime? As the evidence stacked up, the motive behind this brutal crime remained shrouded in mystery. In the pursuit of truth, science often holds the key. And so it did in the trial of Daniel Massell, where the DNA evidence took center stage. This evidence was presented meticulously, piece by piece, revealing a narrative that only science could tell. The DNA evidence was a critical factor in this case. It linked Massell to the crime scene and to Hannah Wilson, the victim. The blood found on Massell's clothes and car was examined and tested. The results were irrefutable. It was Hannah's. This crucial piece of evidence was a damning link between Messel and the tragic end of the young woman's life. But the DNA was not the only piece of the puzzle. The court also heard testimony from a cell tower expert. The expert's findings added another layer to the narrative. 
They showed that Wilson's cell phone found with Messel had pinged off a cell tower near the isolated stretch of land where Hannah's body was discovered. This pointed to the disturbing possibility that Hannah was still alive when her phone was in Messel's possession. This combination of DNA evidence and cell tower data painted a chilling picture. It showed a trail, a timeline, and a tangible link between the suspect and the victim. It was the science that allowed the court to piece together the events of that fateful night. It provided a glimpse into the final moments of Hannah's life and brought her one step closer to justice. The DNA evidence was the turning point in this trial, but the question of motive still lingered. The gavel falls, the courtroom holds its breath, the verdict is in. Daniel Messel, the 50-year-old Bloomington man, found with Hannah Wilson's cell phone and blood on his clothes and car, is pronounced guilty. The air in the courtroom becomes thick with relief, despair, and a multitude of other emotions. Some shed tears of relief, others of sorrow, as the weight of the verdict sinks in. This trial, which has captured national attention, brought to light a horrifying tale of a night of celebration gone horribly wrong. Hannah Wilson, a 22-year-old Indiana University senior, her life tragically cut short, remembered by her friends, the pathologist, the blood spatter expert, and all those who testified, was the human face of the trial. The motive for the murder remains a haunting question. The defenses raised doubts about the investigation and the possibility of other suspects, a chilling reminder of the complexities of crime. The DNA evidence and testimony from a cell tower expert were crucial in securing the verdict. In the end, justice may have been served, but the haunting memory of that fateful April night lives on.